Might have to do this one later. I'll try one more time. I don't know. Okay. So, if it's easy to see, you just write it down. What if it's not easy to see? If it's a little bit harder? Okay, just take one term, divide it by the previous one. Okay, and that's how you find out what you're multiplying this to get that. Okay, same thing with common difference. If you see what it is, you just write it down. If you can't, then you do that. Okay, so it's a term divided by the previous term. Doesn't matter what n is. The tenth term divided by the ninth term, that will give you r, okay? Well, if n is 10, 10 minus 1 is 9. For any value of n. It's just, all I'm saying is you r is this term divided by that term. Take this term, divide it by the one previous. That's what that says. Okay, well, if n was 12, the 12th term, I would go t12 over t12 minus 1 is t11, right? The 12th term over the 11th term, that gives you r. Right? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to give you that on the test, right? This is it's to make professors happy. So, if you don't see what it is, that's all this says. Divide it by the 1 previous, and that's what r is. Check. Do I multiply negative 1 times negative 5? Does that give me 5? Yes. Okay? So we should be able to see if it's arithmetic or geometric. Okay? Once you know r, you can get the next term. Okay? Investigation, well, this is, we're just deriving the formula. Okay? What do I multiply 8 by to get 12? Does anybody see that? Okay, and if you don't, you just do that. Okay, 4 goes in there 3 times, 4 goes in there 2 times. Is that the same as 1 and a half? Yes, it is. Okay, 3 over 2, 1.5, same thing. Multiply 12 by 1.5, you get 18. 1.5, you get 27. And here it is. Okay? They like it as a decimal today. Other days, they'll like it as a fraction. 3 over 2. Okay, the first term again is A. Same as uh, arithmetic. So to get the second term, I'm going to take that and multiply it by R. To get the third term, I'm going to multiply it twice by R. Okay? To get the fourth term, do we see a pattern here? This number is 1 less than this one. So 1 less than 4 is 3. And so on and so on and so on. A, R to the, what's 1 less than N? N minus 1. Okay? 1 less than N. That's the formula. That's it. There she is. Yep. T1. A, same thing. This is the same formula. Is anyone looking at it with a T1, or are we all looking at it with an A? Okay. And they're both on your formula sheet. Look at the first page of your book. Okay? Don't get confused. We'll use one or the other. It doesn't matter. Okay? I think most of us like A. So it's same stuff. This is the general term of the sequence. It's the nth term. If there's n terms in a sequence, it's the last term. Okay, it's the value of the nth term. Okay, I had one student, they were just, they were still confused with this tn to the n, couldn't straighten it out. One word, the value. Oh, okay, that was it. It sunk in. Okay, so it's not d, now it's r. Okay. N, it's the position of the term, or in some questions, it's the number of terms, right? 
there's 19 terms. N is 19. So maybe that word helps, this wordage helps a little bit better than this one. Okay, but we've seen all this before in arithmetic. Determine the formula for the general term. Is this explicit, Lewis? I don't see any nudies. Okay? Don't worry about the term explicit. Okay? Formula for the general term. What is this? This is this guy with the first term. And before it was D substituted, now it's R. Okay? So into the formula, I still have t the n, and I still have okay, n. I don't know what those are. So what's a? 5. Do we see what the common ratio is here? How do I get from 5 to 15? What do I multiply it by? Yeah, 3. Okay, that's it. Here's my formula. Tn is a r n minus 1. I want to substitute in A, and I want to substitute in R, N, T to the N, they stay there. That's the general formula for the general term. Okay, T to the N is 5 times 3 to the N minus 1. Why is that dot really, really important? Yeah. And the other way to do this is, okay, and this is the way the book is doing it, do it like that. Because if we're lazy, it's not 53 times n to the minus 1, right? Okay? So, I'll say it again. I have t to the n. I have n. That's the general formula, or the formula for the general term. Given some value, um, 12,006. Is that a term in this formula? If I can solve it for n, and n's a nice whole number, then I guess it works and it is. Okay? If I give you n43, can I find the value of the 43rd term? Yes. Okay? And that's why this formula is nice. And then your questions, they probably, like the last one, go A, B, C. A says find the general term. Then B, find the value of 6,012. Find n for that. Well, you don't want to go back here and reinvent the wheel again. Here's your formula. That's what you want to use. That's why they asked you to get it. Okay? So, T9. Well, how do I get that? Well, what do I know when they say the ninth term? You know more than... Well, n's 9. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay? So 5 times 3, n is 9. Okay, so 5 times 3 to the power of what? Let's put the bracket there. Okay. So I, I, I think we all got good calculators now. If this was grade 10, I would say, does your calculator do bed mass? If you go 5 times 3 to the power of 8, is it going to go 15 to the power of 8? Or is it going to go 3 to the 8th power times 5? Because there's a difference there, right? So check it now. If I go 5 times 3 to the power of 8, okay, I get the right answer. Does your calculator do that? Or do you need to do this question backwards? Do this part first, then multiply it by 5. Okay? Because I don't know if it does exponents before multiplication. Okay? 3, 2, 8, 0, oh, 5. Okay? You need to know that. Bed mass, right? Brackets, exponents, division, multiplication. Or if you're from some strange place like Europe, maybe it's PEMDAS. In Australia, they don't have brackets in Australia. They have parentheses. Yeah. Okay? Whatever. Order of operations. Okay? Janice and Gary, we're trying to determine the number of terms in this sequence. 
Okay, use the general term formula to write and simplify an equation which could be solved to determine the number of terms. What do we know? Where do we start? Do I know the first term? Yes. Do I know R? Okay, that one's pretty easy to see, right? I'm doubling each thing. R is 2. What else do I know? I know the nth term. Is that the last term in this sequence? Yes, because it terminated. It has a dot here, not three dots. Okay, this keeps going. That terminated. That's the nth term. I don't know what n is, okay? But maybe I can try to solve for it. Here's our formula. Okay, I know everything in there except. Now let's bracket that. N. 2 to the n minus 1. Cool. Now what? All right. That was a good start. Okay. Let's get rid of the 32. Can I do that? Sure. 32 times this garbage. How do I get rid of 32? Opposite of operation. Opposite of times is divide. Okay. 32 divided by 32 is gone. What's this big number divided by that one? 512 is 2 to the n minus 1. Okay? That's the general term formula to write and simplify. This We're doing this in a couple of parts. How can I find n there? You guys have not done this before. You don't know logarithms yet. You see the power rule there? log a x to the power of n. If you know logarithms, you can solve for an exponent. But you guys don't know that yet. You don't get that till grade 12, if you take it. Okay? So, you can't do this. You can't solve for it. But, you can use this method. Okay? 2 to some power has to be equal to 512. We want to know what that power is. Okay? It's something pretty big. So guess and check. Well, I don't know. What's 2, 4? 2 to the power of 4. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2? 16. No. Nope. Let's go 2 to the power of, I don't know, 12. What's that? Four thousand ninety-six. Okay, that's too big. So you rule it in, right? You kind of elimination. Guess and check. Who's got it? 2 to the power of 9 is 512, okay? But 512 is 2 to the 9th power. That equals 2 to the n minus 1. So what must n be? Must be 10, yeah. And in grade 12, you'll do this. Because this is equal to this, then 9 must be equal to n minus 1. And if we don't see it, we solve it. n is 10. Okay? And if we're still confused, then we substitute. If I put 10 here, I get 2 to the 10 minus 1, 2 to the 9. Is that 5, 12? Well, yeah, it is. I just did that. Okay? Make sure it works. Substitution is your friend. Okay? Okay. Hopefully it's not a number like 412,006. Okay? I'm not going to do that to you. Okay? Write each side of the equation with the common base. Determine the solution. That's the solution. Okay. Ten terms. All right? That's how many. That's Remember, that's what we're trying to do here. Right? There's ten terms in this sequence. That's what n means. There's ten terms. What's the value of the tenth term? That. Okay? 
Um, you can do this with a graphing calculator. I don't know if I want to do that right now. But if you're curious, ask me after. Okay, does this mean uh, ring a bell? Geometric means? Remember we did arithmetic means? Insert four means between these two numbers. One, two, three, four. And given enough time, could you play around with this and figure it out? Maybe, okay. But, you know, if it's ugly fractions and stuff on the test, then, you know, we want to do this the big kid way, right? Okay, so what do we do? What do we know? I know the first term is 81. Do I know R? No. Because if I did, I'd be done, right? I just put them in there. Okay, what else do I know? Nth, what term is this in the sequence? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. I know the sixth term is that. So I can write a, do we need this formula still? Let's put it right here. A, R, N minus one. This is, what's A? 81. Don't know R. Do I know N? It's T6. N is 6, right? Now here I don't need brackets because it's 81R, but if you like them, put them in. Okay? You're not going to get confused there. Okay, so let's simplify this a bit. 1 over 729 is 81R to the fifth. Okay? How do I get rid of the 81? Divide it. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other side. Does that look nice? Not really. Okay. Um, what would you guys do? Would you guys put that in your calculator? It's that number divided by 81 gives you that ugly thing, okay? R to what power is going to give you that? If I know R to the 5 equals that number, how do I find out what R is? How do I get R by itself? Well, remember, if it was r squared, well, let's go back. If I was doing Pythagoras and I had c squared, how do I find out c? Square root. How do I find out r? Take the fifth root. 5, fifth root of the answer is 0.1111111111. Okay, that's what R is. Well, R to the fifth is this. I don't want R to the fifth power, I want R. How do I get R? Remember, that's R, the bottom part. The radical part is the bottom part. The exponent part is the top part. 5 over 5 is R to the 1, which is R. Okay. If it's squared, we want to take the square root of it to give us C. If it's cubed, I want to take the cube root of it, because those cancel out, okay? So if you've got a fancy-dancy calculator, do you know how to make that decimal a fraction? Because I just did it. Math button, 
Number one, make it a fraction. Okay? 0. 0.1111, that's what R is, but isn't it nicer as one ninth? Okay? Okay, so that's what R is. It's 0. 0.1 repeat or one ninth, and what's 81 times one ninth? What's one ninth of that? Or if you get enough of them, it's nine. Okay? What's one ninth of 81? How many times does nine go in 81? Nine times. Okay? So, like, if you got a decimal, same thing. Okay? What's nine times one ninth? One. What's one times one ninth? Yeah. What's one ninth times one ninth? What's one eighty one times one ninth? Okay? So it works. That one's kind of ugly. Sure. Okay, but the procedure, we've done this before, right? It's just that R came out to something kind of ugly and... One over five nine zero four nine. If I take the fifth through to that, oh, I didn't put it in five nine zero four nine. What am I saying here? I didn't have to, I'm just thinking, that's, what would you guys do if you saw that? Do you know that's the same thing as this? Okay, I'm dividing both sides by 81, so I think a lot of people will think that. It's the same as this. Okay, this is on the bottom here. If I put it on the bottom, put it on the bottom here, that's what I have. So 1 over 729 times 81 is the same as 1 over 59,049. If I take the fifth through to that to get R, okay, that's going to be the fifth root of 1 over the fifth root of this number. The fifth root of 1 is just 1. The fifth root of this number is 9, okay? So it's another way to look at it. Okay. All right. Okay. Have we seen this before? And who didn't copy the example down last time I did it? it was probably the people who didn't do the assignment question, and therefore you didn't get right in the quiz. Am I correct? But a lot of us did. Okay, so we did really well on that quiz. Okay, so if this was arithmetic, what do I know? I know, don't write this down, I would know that, right? If it was arithmetic. This minus the previous term, that's our definition for D. And that's also the third term minus the second term, right? That's D. The only difference now, it's not D, it's R. So what is this divided by that? That's our definition for R. Right? And what else is equal to R? This one divided by that one. Everybody okay with that? Okay, that's the concept, right? That's what R is. It's one term divided by the previous one. So if this is equal to R, and this is also equal to R, 
What do we do? We let them be equal to one another. Okay? R equals R. That's all that says. And hopefully we can find out what X is. What would we do if we saw that? Algebraically, how do we solve it? Do you guys like fractions? I don't either. How do I get rid of the fractions? Cross multiply. Okay. This times this is x squared. This times this is x plus 3 times x minus 5. Voila, no fractions. When you have a binomial times a binomial, what must you do? Foil it. Four terms, okay? Not two terms. Carmen, turn it off. Okay? So, x squared is x squared minus 5x plus 3x minus 15. I got x squared on both sides of the equal sign. What can I do? Sorry? Yeah. Well, sorry. Come on. This times this is x times x, which is x squared. Right? Just cross multiply. Algebraically, it doesn't make any sense at all. Let me just say this another way. How do I get rid of this x? I multiply both sides by x. Okay? Here I got x divided by x, it's gone. And on this side, I have x times x is x squared. Okay? How do I get rid of x plus 3? I multiply it by both sides. So here it's divided by itself. It's gone. And I have x minus 5 times x plus 3. So I get the same thing. Okay? Let's cross multiply. All right. So I got x squared on both sides. I don't want to divide. I want to subtract it. What happens to them? If I minus x squared to both sides, it's gone, right? So that's kind of nice. Reese loves algebra. Minus 5x plus 3x is minus 2x minus 15. How do I solve this thing for x? Yeah, let's put the numbers over the left, or do you want to put the x's to the left? You know what? I want to put the x's to the left, because I want them to be positive. You want to put the 15's over, that's fine, you'll get the same thing. Okay? So 2x is minus 15. So, divide by 2, x is minus 15 over 2. Again, that's kind of ugly. It's not a nice whole number, but that's what it is. We also want to know the first three terms. Okay? So if you know what x is, the first term is x plus 3. T1 is x plus 3. So I got minus 15 over 2 plus 3. 3 is how many seconds? It's 6 seconds. Okay? Is that okay? Or do I want to... Are we okay with that? Okay, that's 2, right? Right? 6 over 2? Or, or sorry, 3? Sorry? We are adding fractions. Minus 15 over 2 plus 3. I want to find term one. I want to find the first three terms. 
Term 1 is x plus 3. x is minus 15 over 2 plus 3. So if I add these, I know what the first term is. Okay? So minus 15 plus 6 is minus 9 seconds, or minus 9 over 2. Okay? What's the second term? It's x. Well, that's nice. And the third term is x minus 5. Five is how many seconds? It's Ten seconds. Let's do this the long way. Okay, that's five over one. I need a common denominator. That's two. One goes into two two times. Negative five times two is negative ten. Okay, we're okay with this? Okay, I'm finding first term, second term, I'm on the third term. Okay, that's x minus 5. Right? Okay. Found the first term, found the second term, third term is x minus 5. x is that. So I got x minus 5. Okay, so I need, when we add or subtract fractions, I need a common denominator, right? So 5 is the same as 5 over 1. I need to make that a 2. So 1 goes into 2 2 times. 2 times 5 is, okay, negative 5 is the same as negative 10 over 2, right? Okay, negative 15, negative 10 is negative 25 over 2. There's my three terms. Okay? It's an ugly sequence, but it is a sequence. No? Unfortunately. Okay? <clears throat> okay, last one. The fourth term... And the seventh term are this and that, respectively. Use a system of equations to determine the values for the first term and the common ratio. Okay, what do I know? I know the fourth term is negative 54. What's my formula? A, R... What's n here? What's n? It's 4, right? So 4 minus 1 is 3. We're okay with that? What's the next one? Let's use green. The seventh term is... 1, 4, 5, 8, and that is A, R, what's N? 7 minus 1 is 6. Okay? System of equations. There's two equations. There's a system. How am I going to help solve this? What do I do? Let's just rewrite them. 1, 4, 5, 8 is a r to the 6, and negative 54 is a r cubed. I could add them, I could subtract them, I could multiply them both by the square root of pi cubed, I could multiply them, divide them, I could do whatever I want to these equations. What's going to help me? If I add them, am I going to have anything useful? Again, what is the purpose of doing this? I have two variables. I can't solve that equation, right? I can't solve that equation. I have two variables. 
but I have two equations with two variables. I want to get rid of one of these variables by manipulating these equations. Add them, subtract them, multiply them, divide them. What's going to help me get rid of something? If I divide them, what happens with A? It's gone. Yeah. Okay. Adding them doesn't help me. I'm going to have a number, but I'm going to have AR6 plus AR cubed. Can I add these together? No. I can't add an R6 and an R cubed. They're unlike terms. Subtracting them, same thing. Okay. If I divide them, I get this number divided by that number is minus 27. Okay. A divided by A is 1. What's R6 over R3? Can't see that? Purple. Divide. That divided by that is minus 27. Okay. Let's just write this over here. That divided by this, A divided by A is gone. R6 over R3. When I'm dividing with the same base, what do I do with my exponents? Subtract. 6 minus 3 is 3. Or, like I'm explaining to my grade 10s, could I do that? Sure. I got R3. Who sees what R is? What times what times what is negative 27? If we don't see it, then we take the cubed root of both sides. So R is, the cubed root of negative 27 is negative 3. Okay? Hence, do you determine the formula for the general term? A. Did I get A? Oh, I need A. How do I get A? I need the general term, right? That's A, R, oh, I know R, to the n minus 1. How do I find A? Well, pick an equation, put R in, and find out what A is. R cubed. What's negative 3 cubed? I just did that, didn't I? Divide that sucker away. What's A? A is 2. So my general formula is 2, negative 3, n minus 1. Let's just throw another arrow in there to make it look pretty. Okay. Now, was there another way to do this question? I did it that way because it said use a system of equations. But you guys, remember, you can do this, can't you? 5, 6, what was 7? 1, 4, 5, 8. Okay, and then you can use that, let's call that A, so that's going to be T2, T3, that's going to be T4, okay, you can do it that way too on a test, I'm not going to say do it one way or the other, yep.
You have a negative to the sixth power. It's yeah. positive. Yeah, I have a negative to the sixth power. You didn't do bed mass. You didn't put brackets around no, a negative. No, no, I just like I just put a negative three to the power of six. Yeah, so that's going minus three to the six, not negative three to the six. Okay. A negative any even number of times multiplied by itself will always give you a positive. Okay. okay. Because one to four, we should have already done yesterday. But, but we got them learning. 